A very good morning. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. The legacy of the mid-February stratospheric warming event lives on. We've seen, of course, the remarkable uh, record-breaking cold spell to open the month of uh, uh, March following the end of February. And uh, we've had, of course, a pullback in the last week or so with temperatures as high as 157 in the south of England uh, over the course of the past weekend. Uh, things are pretty decent at the moment. We're, we're pretty much in between uh, systems. We've got an area of low pressure, as you can see, over the Baltic Sea, an area of low pressure over the North Atlantic. And, of course, we've got this little uh, kind of no man's land in uh, the weather pattern at the moment across the UK. So fairly decent conditions. Uh, we are going to see uh, there's a high likelihood that we're going to start to see uh, the easterlies return. Uh, Siberian source ur, by the way, uh, coming back into the UK pattern as we go through, uh, from this weekend into the early portion of next week. The details of snow and indeed how cold still open to question, but it looks as if we are going to see uh, temperatures struggling to get much above freezing across many parts, well below freezing in the wind. And uh, we're going to see the return of uh, North Sea snow showers coming into eastern areas, maybe central portions of the British Isles where it's open to the to the the North Sea, for example, the the, the central belt. Um, and uh, we're going to see some pretty harsh frost by night time. So frost, snow back into the pattern once again. And when all is said and done with March 2018, it's going to be interesting to see how it compares to March 2013. Which, by the way, of course, was the coldest since 62. The following April of that was the coldest since 1989. We've seen temperatures down as low as minus 11.2 that April. So uh, it's been cold at this time of the year before. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this compares with years going by. So you can see the changes taking place as we go from the middle portion of this week towards the weekend how we start to shift the upper air pattern. Now we start to lose that area of low pressure and gain more in the way of high pressure over Scandinavia. That will then start to line the winds once again out of Scandinavia, right into the British Isles here. And as we skip through the period, hopefully this will not freeze on me because uh, this is the second time I've cut this video. You can see here by the end of uh, Thursday, we uh, that area of low pressure over the Atlantic tries to push in, but notice how heights start to really dominate Scandinavia. They extend from the, the Norwegian Sea right the way across to Russia once again. We start to connect the air masses between the British Isles and, uh, and Russia, and then we start to draw this cold air over Russia underneath that Scandinavian block, and eventually it reaches the UK. Now, as we, uh, you notice here, even by the time we get out to uh, late Thursday, 2100 hours, uh, we've got uh, southeasterly winds already starting to uh, have influence on the UK. Now, yes, it will probably be primarily as rain, but notice here that uh, you, you follow the lines of equal pressure all the way back into Russia once again, and that um, deep area of low pressure off the GFS, uh, the, the combination of the Scandinavian block and the area of low pressure off the Donegal coast, that is going to trigger probably some uh, gale force southeasterly winds here and increasingly cold weather, I think, as well. And then as we skip towards the second half of uh, Friday, a day later, uh, you can see he, here how the area of high pressure over Scandinavia, over the, the Baltic Sea, really starts to uh, intensify. And that is going to essentially uh, intensify the easterly winds uh, connecting Siberia with the UK. Now, I, I notice here at the 2100 hours Friday, we've got an area of low pressure over, uh, you know what, the, the eastern portion of Europe. Notice the high pressure over Scandinavia. The area of low pressure uh, out to the west of Ireland as well. So we've got low pressure to the south, high pressure to the north, and we're uh, starting to tap that bitterly cold air. Now notice here how precipitation is changing now from rain to snow, and therefore uh, watch this space. Uh, we are talking about winter coming back uh, with a vengeance, I think, as we go into the weekend here. Notice here how the, that area of high pressure strengthens to 1040 millibars, and, uh, you know, it looks very, very similar, doesn't it, 
to at the, the start of the month here. So like I say, how cold is it going to be? That remains to be seen. But as we go through deeper into the weekend, uh, we've got the snow showers coming back in off the North Sea once again. I reckon temperatures are going to be struggling again, two or three degrees at best, and factoring in, you know, a 10 to 15, 20 mile per hour wind, you're going to feel more like minus five to minus eight here. So we're coming back into the freezer once again, folks. I, I do urge that the models are really honing in on this, uh, the, the back uh, to uh, easterly, uh, snow showers coming in. Then we've got a, a system that comes out of uh, the low countries uh, during the day on Sunday. And notice here how the model ramps up the snowfall here across the southern portion of the UK. We've also got snow across the far north of Scotland here. Uh, but this could be a very interesting feature here across southern portions of the British Isles, much of England and Wales. Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me if we have an amber warning for snow by the time we get the Sunday, if this has merit. Still a long way off and still a lot to play for here. Watch this space, keep it right here on marfogonweather.com and on YouTube, and I'll keep you posted as best I can. Have a great Tuesday. Bye for now.